everyone. It's uh, Sister Mary, and uh, welcome to this time of sharing. I'm delighted to uh, have with me today for our conversation, Robin. And uh, Robin's going to just speak to her life uh, during this time of pandemic, uh, just the, how some of the things have been happening in her life and how she's been journeying in her faith. So Robin, why don't you start just by introducing yourself and sure. your connection to the Canadian Martyrs Church in Chaplaincy. Sure. So my name is Robin Daly. Uh, my husband and Mike and I have been part of the community for feels like a couple of years now. Um, gone through Alpha a couple of times and gotten to know a lot more people in the parish. It's starting to really feel like home for us. So that's sort of our connection. And um, yeah, like pandemic time has been, you know, hard for us. I think both Mike and I feel he's at work right now, which is why he's not here. But um, we feel very grateful. I think he's still working and sort of our routine hasn't felt too much different. Um, we've had, you know, some more downtime, which has been nice, sort of like enforced rest mm -hmm. time. He's been working a little bit less, been able to come home early, gotten a lot of uh, time outside, hiking and that, mm -hmm. which is what I call, I don't know, I've been looking for the silver COVID linings, right? And that's one of them. <laughs> I'm going um, to interject and say, Robin sent me a video of frogs. Yeah. What do frogs do? Frogs, fro what noise do they make? I don't know, but it sounded like a bunch sounded, of ducks. You said it sounded like ducks, and it did. You know, we're hiking in the valley, and we just heard, I expected to like, come across a big flock of, like, mallard ducks, but it was just, like, frogs, I guess, you know, mating or whatever they do. Um, so that, you know, we've seen some really cool things, and it's been interesting to see the season change being out a lot more. Um, which has been great and you know our relationship is changing a bit I have to cut his hair so. <laughs> nothing really that, that's that, a right? level of trust <laughs> <laughs> maybe we'll hire you to 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 trim father Marcus's beard <laughs> yeah actually I, I, I can't make it any worse than it already is <laughs> uh oh we're gonna be in trouble now <laughs> <laughs> oh dear so how um how has it been uh, staying, in, I guess, engaged with your, your faith and um, with the, the way usually, I suppose, we live out our faith during, during normal times? But what's that been like for you or what do you notice has been changed or, yeah, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I think, you know, there's like a few things. I think when we sort of, you know, stop being able to go to mass and go to church in the physical sense and that, I kind of wondered what it would be like and what you know, like, would it be as meaningful or impactful? And I think there's a couple of things. One, I think especially around the Easter season, I gained a new appreciation for, like, mm -hmm. the physical liturgy. Um, just, you know, it was good. We watched all the masses, like, Holy Week masses at home, but it was different, you know, not being in the church and sort of, especially I found, like, the Holy Thursday liturgy, I really missed sort of mm -hmm. the washing of the feet in the flesh is so powerful. And then also just at the end of mass when the host is sort of, taken out, you know, to the Garden of Gethsemane, mm -hmm. that I realized really brings me into sort of like the spirit of Easter. And so doing that at home is really different. And it's still been good watching Mass, but I have a new appreciation for the physical elements of the liturgy that like bring us into sort of God's presence and worship. Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing sort of, I guess, sort of tied to that is um, just, you know, where we normally look for God and where we find him and mm -hmm. how sometimes we limit him or put him in a box. And so mm -hmm. I, I think I especially like wondered not receiving like the Eucharist, like the, you know, real body and blood, what is that going to look like over an extended period of time? And the first time we kind of watched Sunday mass at home, I thought like, oh, this is, yeah, how, what's this going to be like? What's this going to do for my faith? Like we're just watching it a recorded mass on TV and then being very surprised at sort of the moment, I guess, of spiritual communion rather than physical communion, feeling like God's presence and his love and just him telling me like, you know, do you never learn? Like I'm, I'm going to be here. Like in um, uh, this book club I'm part of one time we read this um, book. It was like a series of interviews and she was uh, talking to the man who used to be sort of the head rabbi of England. And he was mm. talking about how we, the same thing, how we limit God or like only look for him in certain places and how our God is a God of surprises. And if you sort of only look for him in the language you speak or the places that you're used to, like you're really going to miss out on his presence elsewhere. And I think this sort of time has been, you know, that quote has kind of come back to me multiple times mm. over my life. And this one is one of those where, yeah, like we just, we have to look a little bit harder for him maybe, but like mm. God is going to show up and 
Um, you know, I was having a Zoom call with my dad who doesn't really have faith at all, but he's taken an interest in mine and, you know, church came up and he kind of asked, so, so like, what's your spiritual life like? Like there must not be a lot happening. And I kind of had this reaction of like, no, like there actually are all of these ways that like I've grown and stayed in touch and like learned about God in a new way. And that, you know, like from an outside atheistic perspective or even us, we kind of think often, well, we have to do everything. Like we make this relationship happen. We make like our spiritual life happen. So if we're not going to church and we're not doing it, nothing's going to happen. And that was kind of I think what he was thinking and then my reaction was like no god shows up like god is the one doing this and you know he showed up for me and will continue to and for everyone else too and you know it's it's just funny because my dad is sort of was even like reflecting something that i think i was feeling but then i had this you know big negative reaction like no that's not how it works <laughs> wow so just even to be given the, like the grace of of that whole uh, awareness that yeah god god's not limited i love that you know and, yeah and god can surprise us and and it's just that invitation to to open our eyes isn't it and not to i always use that example of moses in the burning bush he, you know he sort of sees it out of the corner of his eye but if he hadn't turned and really looked at it he wouldn't have approached it and then had that encounter with god so i think god gives us these gentle little invitations to I am here. I am. You know? We're so busy looking in the old places or in the normal or the familiar that we sometimes we don't recognize or we don't take that step to the Yeah. Next. Yeah. And I think I really like that too because it's, um, you know, like we're reflecting a lot. Like I went through the RCIA, I'm a convert, and then they asked me the next year to sort of speak to what my journey looked like a year after. And I was like, what can I even say about continuing and the spiritual life? And I think so much of it is that it's just like you can't make it happen. All you can do is be like, open to receiving mm -hmm. the grace of God or like predisposed mm -hmm. to that kind of like what you're saying that you're just maybe you know the invitations aren't always like loud and yeah. you know, sometimes they are but <laughs> <laughs> trying to be open and yeah look a little harder or listen a little more and then turn your head when you hear you know or see whatever God is calling like that's yeah. I don't know it's hard because it's we do always want to like make it happen ourselves or that but. yeah yeah, especially yeah, especially when we feel so powerless about so many things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <coughs> excuse me. What's been? How have you kind of stayed connected? I suppose with the Feeding Martyrs Church and Chaplaincy. Anything that you've, you know, that's helped make that connection happen? Seeing as we yeah. kind of work with the church. Yeah. So I think you know, like the masses of Father Marcus posts. We watch those. We also watch a lot of Bishop Barron, which has been like interesting to you know, mm -hmm. sort of. It's like going to different churches, but. For yeah. <laughs> I've heard there's been a lot of, I've been doing yeah, a lot of exactly. <laughs> And uh, I think, you know, like, I, I like emailing, I like letter writing. So there's a few people mm -hmm. that we've kind of been in contact with that. A few connections that we made in Alpha that, um, you know, like, I've actually deepened over this time because we've been able to, like, Zoom call or just stay in contact a little bit more. And, you know, I'm talking to you, talking to Father, talking to Rachel, like, you guys are all mm -hmm. open and there and, like, ready to support us. So, mm -hmm. Thank you. I got, I missed it, but I got my first phone call from the phone tree yesterday. Oh, nice. Girl, so I, I'm sad to miss it, but I'm sure I'll connect with her, so. Oh, love it. Yes, the phone tree has started, and uh, it's been kind of exciting, I think, for the volunteers, so that's nice to hear you got your call. Yeah. <laughs> and if anybody's listening and they don't have their phone number uh, in the parish, just call in and leave your phone number, and you'll get a phone call from a member of the community. So, uh, thanks for that little plug. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> So maybe just to um, to wind up our conversation, um, wind up, wind down, I'm not sure, but end would maybe be the word. Uh, what What is giving you hope? Uh, what are signs of encouragement or hope that you're holding on to or, or uh, witnessing these days? What keeps you going, I suppose? I think the biggest thing, um, you know, like we've all been through difficult times in our lives, like maybe nothing that looks like this or that's quite as uncertain and unpredictable. But um, I think I kind of keep going back to just, you know, that I've been in difficult situations before, faced adversity mm -hmm. or things have looked really black and like there's mm -hmm. no solution to this and it won't get better. But I've always come through and like God has always been there in those situations too. So I think I'll you know, one of my little sort of mantras or things that I've kind of been going back to is that like, yeah, we've been here before, not exactly here, but 
something like that. And it seems like there was no way to the other side, but God mm-hmm. always comes through and like, you know, you put one foot in front of the other one day at a time and you do mm-hmm. get through it and things get better. Mm-hmm. And I think with that too, like, you know, I've heard the saying that there's, you know, you can't have Good Friday without Easter Sunday. You also mm-hmm. can't have Easter Sunday without Good Friday. So there's, you know, life has that up and down, that ebb and flow. And this is like sort of a big external sort of question and dark time and all of that. But, you know, God is always there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's interesting that, well, it's beautiful to use the Paschal mystery as your, um, your sort of your background, your foundation or your um, symbol of how to live through this time. And, and, and sometimes you say about the Holy Saturday piece that it's sort of the, the place of, of not knowing yet because you, you, all, you know what Good Friday's been, but you don't know Easter Sunday's coming. And so that Holy Saturday is the place of in between. And, uh, and sometimes I think a bit of this time is, is an in between time. And, uh, but, but we, as, that's the gift of our faith that we know Easter Sunday is always part of Good Friday. Yeah, it's funny you use the term in between time because even just like in reflecting on my face sort of before this all happened in January, February, I was kind of in that place of like in between time, like nothing's really happening. I don't know if like I'm on the right track or like, you know, when things were, um, my mom's just got a new place and is sort of moving, we're kind of in chaos and I'm not good at the in between times. Like I like to know that I'm on the right track and where I'm going and seeing the progress. So um, this has been you know, good training for that because life is a lot of in between times. Yeah. <laughs> it feels yeah. uncertain and you maybe don't know where you are. So I think yeah. getting some training and how to deal with that is, you know, it's difficult, but, you know, a different blessing. Yeah. And, and that whole sense that you started out the conversation with that, that it's not in between time for God. God's already there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, waiting to surprise us and waiting yeah. for us to recognize him. Yeah. Well, Robin, it's, we could go on for hours, but I think for the sake of our listeners, we'll yeah. we'll cut it off there. But thanks so much, and thanks to Mike. I know uh, he's out working, which is so beautiful that he is risking to go out and do that and to, and to work during these times. And uh, so, um, thanks to both of you, and thanks for your sharing of your of your faith and your journey with with uh, people of God. Happy to.